if we want to change what the the future of the world looks like, we need to get more women interested um, and involved in the tech industry. Girls Who Code wants to inspire the next generation of female coders. Because coding isn't just like hacking into the mainframe and like sitting at a computer or like getting a tunnel or something. This is coding. It is design thinking. It is creative. It is accessible. It is making the world your own. Instead of consuming the internet, girls were creating it. All by turning the world's hottest music video into the coolest coding class to ever exist. And that, that's education. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Tasha Cronin. I'm head of production at Mojo Supermarket and I was the producer on Doja Code. Doja Code is a codable music video Mojo Supermarket created with Girls Who Code. Girls Who Code is a nonprofit organization in the United States that's focused on getting young girls and women aged like 10 to 21 interested in careers in tech. Our dream collaborator, of course, was Doja Cat um, because of her huge popularity, but more importantly, she's also um, a not-so-secret gaming nerd as well as a black woman and just a complete badass. The tech industry is completely dominated by men. Within the United States, sadly, only 3% of girls aged 14 to 18 are interested in a career in tech. Um, and because of that, that huge disparity, our world as we know it is being created and designed by men, especially as we live more and more online. And so if we want to change what the, the future of the world looks like, um, we need to get more women interested um, and involved in the tech industry. And so of course that starts at a young age. Girls Who Code is one of Mojo Supermarket's first clients and we're very invested in getting more girls involved in the tech industry. The challenge being, how do we get girls, especially teenage girls, interested in tech when it's a field that's dominated by older white dudes? So our challenge was to make learning to code interesting. Rather than trying to encourage or convince girls, especially teenage girls, to take a coding lesson, we came up with a concept that made uh, learning to code interesting by just simply putting content in front of them that they would naturally want to engage with and sneaking in a coding lesson. And then they ended up walking away knowing how to write code and hopefully learning that writing code is fun, it's creative, um, it's not boring ones and zeros, but something in which you can shape the world around you. I had a moment after this project launched that's probably my proudest moment my 14 year old niece sent it to me saying, hey, my friends are playing with this thing and I thought that you would think it was really cool. I was like, Stella, remember that thing I was telling you about with the pop star that I couldn't go into all of the details? This is that project. And she's like, wow, that's so awesome. So the fact that like my 14 year old niece, who's one of my favorite people in the world, found this project through her friends and sent it to me, just spoke to the impact that it was having on this specific generation of girls. And it made us all just so incredibly proud. You know, when we first pitched the idea of a codable music video to Girls Who Code, they instantly fell in love with it and thought, yes, this is exactly um, what we want to do and how we can get girls excited. In terms of a, an artist to partner with, Doja Cat was on the top of our list. So we approached her record label and Doja was instantly very excited about the idea. Um, and as it turns out, she was shooting a music video for Woman and she was shooting it in four weeks. And so we had the perfect window to jump in right at that moment. However, timing was very tight. Doja was already um, going to partner with Child to direct the music video, and she was just as excited as Doja. Uh, and the next step was to walk through the Child's storyboards to take a look at the content of the video and figure out which moments would make the most sense for them to be customizable. And we all agreed upon the four moments. And at that point, Child and Doja agreed to kind of lock those moments. Other things might change during the course of the production, but we knew that those four moments were gonna be captured. You know, we had pitched and supplied to Doja in those moments, like we love the moment of the queen getting a manicure by the robot. Like it would be great if we could just 
customize and change what the nails are. And Dojo, when you appear in front of all of those men and start taking charge, let us manipulate like the size of you, the color of you, how quickly you manifest and everything luckily, you know, that we pitched to her, she was um, fully on board with. As far as the design look and feel of the microsite itself, knowing she was shooting two music videos, she was also on tour at the time. We worked to create a world that existed within the design iconography of the planet, her album, just to make those types of approvals really smooth and fast. Um, but we still had um, creative freedom in terms of some of the colors and some of the typesettings, um, which was incredible. In terms of collaborating across multiple parties, um, it's key to understand everyone's priorities. Um, the agency's creative vision, um, our clients must haves, um, any kind of production partners, like what's the win for them? Um, and having an understanding of what all of those key things are. Usually as a producer, you can understand what to safeguard, what to push for, and where there are moments of compromise. Um, given on this project that we only had four weeks to execute, we didn't have a whole lot of time for internal team tension or back and forth with the client or you know pushing back on Doja Cat, whose notes were all incredibly reasonable. Um, so we streamlined the process a bit by making a decision to have the look and feel exist within Doja's world already because we know that she likes that. We didn't want to waste time um, arguing over a font or a color palette um, when really in this experience, the music video itself is full screen. That's really the creative. Um, the key moments, the key four moments within the music video, you know, a window opens up so that it's nice and big and easy for the girls to understand what are the steps that they're meant to be taking. And with the client, you know, we want girls to actually learn code. It's not about clicking various buttons or pulling an avatar or just swapping some outfits. We knew that writing code itself, that was crucial. How do we make these moments work? How do we distill the code itself in such a way that is simple for someone who's new to coding. Um, it was very clear what their, what their to do was when it came to those moments. Know that on every day, every producer around the world is doing something new or something that they've never done before. And as such, I definitely um, drive home to younger producers to make sure that your fundamental skills are incredibly sound. Like, make sure that you've got the training on how to read a script, on how to dissect a concept, on how to build out a schedule, and how to ballpark a budget. Those fundamentals you're gonna need for the rest of your career. Um, my also big piece of advice is reserve the use of the word no, because nothing is impossible. Have a one-on-one -on -one and a heart-to-heart -heart with your creatives and figure out, okay, what exactly is the concept? What is it that they love about this? What is it that they want to do? And typically, from that point, you can say, you know what? I don't think we can do this exactly as you've written it, but what if we were to go about it this way? It doesn't necessarily have to be the Grand Canyon. It can probably be swapped with another giant hole in the ground, and creatives are going to be open to that.